What's going on, Summoners? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. I'm Kangas, and today we're talking about our predictions for the worst champions going into patch 11.17. While there's tons of buffs and nerfs each patch, it can be pretty hard to actually know what's going to change and what's going to stay the same. Sometimes a seemingly huge nerf really just brings a god tier champion down to the S tier, and they're still pretty OP. Other times, what seems like a minor 2 base AD reduction just causes a champion to drop off a cliff. So we're here to steer you away from what we think are going to be the worst champs in each roll this patch. Starting things off in the top lane, we have Lucian. If you're a regular viewer of our meta videos, which you should be, then you know that we are big advocates of not playing this champion in a solo lane. And a reason is that his stats just speak loud enough on their own. On 11.16, Lucian has an astoundingly low 46% win rate in Platinum Plus. For a champion that is supposed to just stomp any matchup, that is completely pathetic. Now, in pro play, you may see some pretty good examples of Lucian Top doing well, but this isn't as simple as be good enough at the champ to see results. You also need your entire team to play around. Your jungler has to always be nearby to make sure you don't get camped, and the other laners will have to play with that in mind. For that reason, even pros at the top of the ladder really don't make him work consistently. Lucian's win rate is pretty low there too. And even in the pros, his stats aren't actually that good. Across all regions, he still has a negative win rate in the top lane, so the risk just isn't worth the reward. And this is all pre-11.17 that we're talking about, keep in mind. On this patch, they're making Lucian a broken AD carry, but they're also making his solo strength much worse. He's losing base AD, which is being compensated by his new passive, but you need an ally to trigger that. His ult is also going to shoot less bullets unless you have crit chance, so building items like Blade of the Rune King, Cerildas, and Black Cleaver will not nearly be as effective. And yes, League is all about playing what you find fun, but it can't be fun to play such a truly awful useless champ. At that point, just play Teemo top lane if you want to rage bully. Yes, he will be more useful than your Lucian. Now, avoiding the champs on this list is a good starting point for ranking up, but if you're actually serious about climbing, you should check out ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros like CoreJJ, Aphromoo, and Xmithy to help you really understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized one-on-one -on -one experience, we also got top-tier coaches available 24-7 to help you anytime you want. Whatever you're interested in, go check it out. Now, our second top laner for this patch is Renekton. Now, I don't want to say that he is a completely awful champ. He's still a pretty strong laner, able to bully most other champs out in the early game. The issue is, that's about all he provides. Outside of lane phase, Renekton falls off harder than a sack of bricks. You either build full damage and get blown up, or build tanky and provide next to no threat past 20 minutes. There's plenty of other options that can be strong laners and still scale up to be a lot more useful later. Wukong, even after his nerfs, is a powerful pick into AD top laners and has incredible team fighting strength with his ult. Or just straight up take a tank, play the early game slow, and provide a lot more utility than Renekton. Now for the jungle, we're starting things off with Rumble. Despite all the nerfs that he's received, there are plenty of people still trying to make him work in the role, and let me be one to tell you, stop. This is sort of the classic champ that dominates pro play, so hey, let's completely gut him scenario, and there's no reason to pick him anymore. He does pretty bad against just about every meta jungler, being unable to duel them, nor can he really outgank them, since Rumble ganks are not all that impressive. If you need an AP jungler, Echo and Evelyn are much better options for solo queue, with both of them providing a ton of pressure once you have their ults. Or if you just really love farming and like that about Rumble, just go try Karthus instead. He can clear just about as fast and scales much harder for later teamfights. Now, if you've been paying attention to win rates over time, you know that post VGU Mundo hit the ground crawling. His win rate in all roles was pretty damn bad, but now with a bit of love from Riot and players learning how he really works, he still does a decently strong top laner. But in the jungle, he's still kind of an awful pick, and you probably want to stay away from that. His early game is just too weak to stand up to strong early skirmishers, and if you're going to power farm the jungle and avoid interactions, you'd rather be a strong scaling champion with huge teamfight influence. Mundo works in the top lane because you get more gold and experience than a jungler normally does, which means that you have a lot more stats to work with for teamfighting. And those stats are exactly what Mundo needs to do well. His VGU made him a much more interesting champion, with more skill expression built in, but he's essentially the same role. He's just a big fat stat check. Mundo does not have AoE CC, catch, or engage like other tanks. He just wants to run into fights, soak up damage while doing as much as he can to the backline as possible, and he needs to be big to do this. 
Like I said, the jungle doesn't provide as much resources consistently, so Mundo Jungle is basically reliant on snowballing off of early fights, and you'll just find more success playing champs that have some form of CC or utility to fall back on. For example, Zack is in a really good spot right now, and while she's not nearly as popular, Sejuani is also a decent second option for tanky junglers that can also engage. Next up in the mid lane, we'll start off with Azir. It's pretty common knowledge that Season 11 hasn't exactly been nice to mages, and personally, I think that's kinda fair. For years, mages have reaped the rewards of having ridiculously OP items, and I'm glad to see them at the bottom for once. And out of the mages, Azir is maybe the worst of all for solo queue. For one, he's just such an easy target for the meta picks to bully. While his soldiers allow him to bully other mages pretty well, he's an easy all-in target for most melee mid laners. Since all of his trading power in lane is AoE, it's very likely that an Azir player will shove in waves whether they are trying to or not. This then puts him in a spot where they're overextended and very susceptible to the aforementioned all-ins. Yeah, he has his E to dash back to safety, but that's a relatively long cooldown and can be easily blocked by an opponent if they have the presence of mind to get behind him. And if you die once on Azir, odds are you're gonna die every time your opponent has the rolt up. And on top of how easy he is to bully, he's also pretty hard to play properly in the first place. If you play him perfectly, you can definitely do ridiculous amounts of damage in the late game, but a single misplaced click can ruin it all. Other champions can get similar results with a lot less effort and a much more forgiving amount of wiggle room for misplays. So if you want a mid lane mage it's easier to play and still scales pretty reliably, just check out Vagar. Worst case scenario, you press gauge and you press R. Now, like I said, control mages have pretty much been stepped all over this season, and yeah, before I said that hey, it was their time, they had it coming, part of me still misses them. It gets kind of old having every meta champ being a one-shot machine. So if Riot isn't going to buff the items that the class uses or nerf the ones that make the other champs so OP, I'd like to see some individual buffs. So that leads us to today's question of the day. What champion has been out of the meta that you would like to see buffs for? For me, it's got to be Orianna. She's just such a classic champ, but I think I can count how many times I've seen her in the last four months on two hands. But regardless of what the meta is, for some reason I just always feel happy when I see an Orianna on my team because she's got decent damage and also just a lot of utility. So hey, if she's buffed, I'm a happy guy. But let me know your answers in the comments down below. Now our other mid laner that you need to stay away from is Akali. Now hear me out, yes Akali is something that pros and high yield players can still make work, but let's be clear on something, making something work doesn't mean it's good. Hell, you can make team of support and Soraka jungle work, but they are not good picks. Plus, there's champs that fill the same niche, but do it better. With the last round of nerfs on patch 11.14, Akali lost a huge amount of skill expression via her QE combo aim, as well as a good bit of her kill potential. If you play her super well, you can still get a lead and still carry games, but you won't do it with as much consistency as other mid lane assassins. So don't ask yourself, am I good enough to pull off Akali? Ask if it's worth putting in so much effort to even get a mediocre performance out of her when instead you could just play something like Katarina or Diana and get better results without having to bend over backwards. Now moving things out of the bot lane, our first AD carry to avoid is Akshan. Now, last match, we said that Akshan as a whole was something to avoid, but we've now seen that with the right build and playstyle, Akshan mid is actually pretty good. But the warning still stands for his other roles, especially in the bot lane. Now, the reason is because there's two things that make Akshan a strong mid laner. He can easily bully most opponents, using his passive to kite in and out as he needs, and then his E to swing when it's time for more of a committed trade. And being in the middle of the map also makes it easier to roam to help the jungler or to gank other lanes. But in the bot lane, both of those strengths are completely wasted. His trading pattern just doesn't work in 2v2 situations that well, and while he can bully the shorter ranged meta mid laners, most bot laners can actually outrange him, nullifying his kiting power. And when it comes to fighting all in lanes, he does not stand much of a chance. He doesn't have nearly the burst damage that you need to keep up with somebody like Lucian or Tristana, and his E is pretty easy to just either interrupt or block with all the champions who can jump on you. So, losing most lanes means that you won't have many opportunities to roam, which is a pretty core part of his kit. And the few times that you can roam, you're then limited to plays on the bottom half of the map. It's just never really worth roaming all the way topside from bot lane since you're giving your opponent way too much time to free farm and take place, and you end up missing out on a ton of XP. Our next bot lane that we say you should not play is Syndra. Enough people are playing her that I feel the need to put her on the list. I wouldn't go as far as to say that she's in the top 10 worst champs in the game, but she is the worst out of the niche AP carries in the bot lane, at least for solo queue. 
Now, at a point in time, she was actually best in class, but Meta Shift and Season 11 as a whole hasn't been the nicest. Ziggs, Cassiopeia, Heimerdinger, Karthus, pretty much every other mage gets more consistent results. They have better wave clear early on, can neutralize even the strongest of 2v2 lanes, and scale into super strong late game carries. Syndra only really works if you can get a lead early and then snowball that lead by constantly one-shotting your opposing laners. Even then, bruisers and assassins from the top side of the map are usually too much for you to handle since most of them have some way to outplay your ult or just soak it up and kill you anyway. In the future, Syndra may come back as a strong flex pick, but Riot themselves have stated that they're being pretty cautious about giving her much attention since she quickly becomes a dominant pro play pick when she's strong. So yes, she's played in pro play, but don't expect her to be good in solo queue in the bot lane anytime soon. Next up for our supports, we'll lead with Set. As we've covered in other patches, the biggest issue with this champ is that he is just too easily nullified by other supports. Being melee means that he's going to take a lot of poke from the ranged champions in the bot lane, and usually the answer to being poked down is to go for an all-in, but just about every meta support can easily disengage any attempt that you make. As a result, you just sort of awkwardly waddle back and forth without actually providing much pressure, as then you get poked out and your AD carry is essentially left in a 1v2 lane. The one way you can make him work is by pairing him with a super aggressive AD carry like Tristana that can actually follow up if you flash in to get a kill with your E. But if the entire point of your champion is to play around a 5 minute summoner cooldown, there's probably better options. Let's set Sane his natural habitat as a solo laner and just try engaging with Leona or Rel instead. Now finishing off our list, we have a champion that pains me to admit it because I mean I just picked up a win on him earlier today, but I did not carry that game. We got Pantheon. What makes him such a rough pick right now is his extreme reliance on snowballing early in order to be useful. There's plenty of champs that can be played as kill lane supports, but most of those aren't completely feast or famine picks like Pamp. For example, Leona and Nautilus can definitely pair up with an AD carry like Tristana or Lucian and 100-0 other bot laners, but in lanes where they can't snowball, they still provide engage and tons of disruption as frontliners. But when Pantheon is behind, he is basically entirely useless. He's got no AoE CC, just his brief single target stun, and if he's insanely fed, yeah, you can ult into a team and use this to blow up a high priority target. But as a support, you don't really have the income to do that reliably, or at all, really. Your only goal as Pantheon support is to try and spoon feed a carry as much as you can, in the hope that by the time you fall off and become useless, they can then make up for the game being essentially a 4v5. Which again reminds me why I put so many hours into learning him last year uh, when they just make him kind of a trash champ now. Thanks, Riot. And that about wraps things up for our worst 10 champs on patch 11.17. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to sub so you never miss out on our meta guides and you're always in the loop of what the best picks are. Remember to let me know what champion you want to see some buffs for in the comments down below. And the last thing, check out our community discord through the link in the description box below. That's it for today, so best of luck on the rift, everybody. Stay hydrated. I'll see you in the next one.